You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know until somebody brings it to your attention. Radiologist called me in his office. He said, you're consistently shooting your ankles too blank. I don't know if it was too dark or too light. I thought they were perfect. Until somebody brings it to your attention, you don't know. Let's say they were too light. I bumped it up, wrote it down in my notes. The key word there is you're consistent in your images. Okay? The easier you make their job with good images, the more you will be promoted. Linear grids. Cross grids were what? This, this. How do you describe that? They are two parallel grids. Yeah, two parallel grids that are 90, orientated 90 degrees from each other, are they not? Or like that. Like this is not widely or never has been widely used out there because it's so critical. You have to be dead center to this thing. You would have to be within the recommended source to image distance or what we used to call focal film distance. Okay. You'd have to be perpendicular to it and centered to it. So it would be so critical. Kodak, when I was with them, came up with a honeycomb grid. The concept of this, you can picture honeycomb, eight-sided little, the, the, the comb itself, you know. And the concept was it cleans up scatter, and yet you have more positioning latitude in all directions. So it was kind of a cool idea. But it wasn't, yeah, but, you know, here we are going from film to digital. So again, it's a new and improved covered wagon, you know. One of those things. Could we still use it? Could we still use grids even with digital cassettes? So I don't know why they didn't market it, but I didn't really see it marketed. Honeycomb is the design. So, yeah. uh, could, it, could a cross grid be used, like if you're combing down on something? On a I have never in my 30 years seen a cross grid in application. Oh. Yeah. The edges would be it's it's more historical. Time. Yeah, it was just so critical, you know. Parallel, linear, this way. Focus grid, they said, well, since we have a divergent ray coming out, like a pyramid, it makes sense that a focus grid would have less attenuation bilaterally. You understand what I'm saying? Here's parallel, and you got the divergent ray coming off like this, you're going to have absorption absorption, aren't you? Okay. Do we still get diagnostic films? Probably the simplest and, and cheapest grid to manufacture is linear parallel. These focused were less absorption bilaterally like here on the focused. So if I asked you, if you had your focus grid upside down, where would, well, first of all, I got to define grid cutoff. What is grid cutoff? Undesirable absorption. Undesirable absorption of the primary X-ray beam. Primary means that the x-rays that exit the x-rays that exit the patient and that are parallel to the lead strips get through to the film or the image receptor. Primary. Okay. Grid cutoff is unwanted absorption of primary portion of the x-ray beam. Okay? So if you had a focus grid, here it is, but now it's like this. You're only good in the middle. Yeah. You'd have absorption here, you'd have absorption here. Everybody picture that? Instead of this way, it's this way. So you would have absorption, absorption. You would have grid cutoff on both lateral sides. Do I need to draw a picture? Nope. Okay. I'm be like a mime up here. <laughs> huh? Be like a little bit. Yeah. Let's see the center. Right. When you use an extension cone, you know what that is, right? We've gone into that. Beam restricted devices. Oh, that's the next chapter. I can't talk about that. That's right. Okay, I'll back off from that. <laughs> I can't discuss that. Is that that? Yeah, that's an extension cylinder. People think it concentrates like a like a uh, like a nozzle on a fire hose. It doesn't happen with X-rays. As we use this, it gets rid of the lateral aspect of the divergent ray. So you actually have less overall x-rays. You 
have more. You have less. So when you use that, you have to compensate. Let me explain. I used one of those whenever I did sinuses. They're air-filled cavities, your frontal, your maxillary, ethmoid, sphenoid, you can learn all these. You don't go up in technique because these are air-filled. It gets rid of the scatter. It produces beautiful images of the sinus. You can fit all your sinuses within this cone. You gotta really fine-tune your positioning skills. But I used to use that on all my sinuses. The images were really pretty. Well, I'm doing a cross-table lateral hip. Guy was big enough in ER, and there was a lot of scatter, the image was grayed out. I used one of these, but I had to max out my mass to compensate for the reduced amount of x-rays. I don't have all that lateral aspect of the beam. I only have that much. So I use like 75 kbp at 800 mass. Cross table lateral. Did I get a diagnostic? Did I demonstrate the fracture of the neck? Yeah. Is there some type of like shielding over their eyes? No. No, there's not. No. Uh, Four view sinuses is not going to wipe out your retinas, that sort of thing. Okay. Your eyes are susceptible, your thyroid, okay? You know, when people have CT scans, three to five rags per slice, there is concern. You're probably slicing maybe two, three, four max through the eyes that are radiosensitive. But again, everything in x-ray is risk versus benefit. Okay. All right. ET to explain grid cutoff. Did we just describe that? The unwanted <laughs> absorption of primary portion of the beam. The primary is those exit radiation that are parallel to the lead strips. Okay? You don't want to absorb those out. Okay. 19 identify the simplest type of grid. That was linear. Parallel, which means the same. If I knew you were taping, I would have put off my foundation on it. <laughs> Probably a little glossy. <laughs> all the newscast people. Can you imagine going to makeup every day? Okay. 20. Identify the main disadvantage of linear and cross grids. Grid cut off. I like two word answer. Grid cut off. We use grids everywhere, but you have to be aware of them. Again, grids always have which way the grid lines run. Here's the grid. I can angle this way. I can angle this way. No problem. The problem is this. Then you get grid cut off. Okay? Chest x-rays, we tend to do lengthwise. No problem if I'm slapping off. But if you do a hypersthenic patient, now it's critical that you're perpendicular. Capisce? When you're going to do an abdomen in surgery, make sure they don't have the patient rotated. You learn the hard way. Come in, goofing around, listen to rock and roll on the radio, not paying attention. Both my films are too light. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you roll it back? Can you inject them again? 260 cc syringes full of contrast media so I can repeat my films because I'm incompetent. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your support. <laughs> I tell you, I've had some character building experiences. Somebody put ultrasound film in eight of my neonatal chests. It took me an hour to take those. I had to spend another hour to repeat them all. I had a portable that was 10 kbp off. I had to go up and do eight adult chests. It took me an hour or whatever to do. You just bite your tongue, squish your roll of cloth tape, Take a coworker out back and whoop on them. You know, something to relieve the stress and go do it again. Okay? Don't find excuses. 3.30. It's time for you to leave. You had to do a portable chest? It's your responsibility to get a good image. Uh, can you repeat my bad chest for me? No, it's your responsibility. Okay? So go up and just do what you got to do. Okay? Be responsible. Next. <laughs> 